React was created in 2013 by Facebook, so Mark Zuckerberg could track both your personal data and your component state at the same time. It introduced the virtual DOM, which sounds futuristic but mostly translates to re-render everything, then act like it's optimized. React developers spend most of their day debating props versus state and the rest chasing the next Next.js release that promises to fix all their pain until it doesn't. Angular came from Google in 2010 and then underwent a complete identity crisis in 2016 when Angular 2 arrived with TypeScript and a giant learning curve. It promised a batteries included approach which is code for this framework can do everything, just try not to drown in it. Angular developers create meticulously organized folder structures, only to cry softly when forced to scroll through thousand line templates. Vue.js was created in 2014 by Evan Yu after he left the Angular team and said, what if we actually make this simpler? It's the progressive framework that borrows the best ideas from everyone else, React's components, Angular's templates, and claims to be the Goldilocks solution. Vue developers will tell you it's the perfect middle ground while waiting patiently for major corporations to adopt it so they can say, I told you so. Svelte burst onto the scene in 2016, courtesy of Rich Harris, who was apparently fed up with shipping fat JavaScript bundles. Its big selling point is no virtual DOM, which as developers speak for, we compile your components away, but trust us, it's magic. Svelte devotees claim it's the future while quietly praying their product manager doesn't ask, why didn't we just use React? Ember.js was huge around 2011 with a convention over configuration philosophy that basically does everything for you except marketing. People say it's batteries included and ambitious, which might be code for everyone else forgot about it. Who the fuck is that guy? Despite the fading spotlight, Ember has a fiercely loyal community who still believe in a world where you never have to debate your file structure again. Backbone.js dates back to 2010, a simpler time when jQuery was your best friend and you couldn't imagine needing anything else. It gave us models, views, and routers in a world otherwise ruled by global script tags. Backbone is still lurking in legacy code bases, quietly reminding us that single page apps weren't always so complicated until React showed up with a million NPM packages. Meteor arrived in 2012 to unify front end, back end, and your entire soul under one JavaScript stack. It promised real time everything out of the box, as if latency had been permanently banished. Meteor still has fans who love the all-in-one approach, but these days it's mostly overshadowed by Next.js, Serverless, and whichever new hotness decides to grace us next month. Next.js built on React because apparently React alone wasn't enough. It tackles server-side rendering, file-based routing, and hydration so you can pretend you're not writing the same React code anyway. Startups flock to Next.js because it's easy to spin up. Then they discover how many ways there are to break dynamic routes. But hey, at least it's not yet another Webpack config. Gatsby is the static site generator that ironically ships a mountain of GraphQL queries just to build your blog. It's all about pre-rendered pages for blazing speed, right up until you install too many plugins and your build times exceed the lifespan of your average Mayfly. Gatsby devs love bragging about how fast their sites load, ignoring the 600 dependencies they had to wrestle along the way. jQuery technically isn't a framework, but it's the wise old sage that taught us document ready in a prehistoric era of the web. For a while, it was the glue that held the internet together, but now it's mostly found in ancient code bases and the hearts of devs who remember simpler times. jQuery is still around in 2025, quietly powering half your favorite websites while new frameworks appear daily, trying to fix the problems we somehow never solve.